Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rebecca and on this channel I go for all things accounting, finance, excel and investment related so if you do like this kind of content then please do consider subscribing and otherwise as always I'm going to jump straight into today's video. So in today's video I'm going to cover a little bit of variance analysis and this is covered in the dreaded MDCL, so the Management Accounting Decision and Control Unit at AAT. It's also covered at A level and it's also covered if you are studying accounting at university. Now, before we get into an example around standard costing, it's worth understanding why we use standard costing and why it's been tested in the likes of AAT, university, A-level, etc. Now, the reason is because in the real world, when we're preparing a budget, in all likelihood, we're going to use standard costing to prepare that budget. And the reason for that is because it takes a lot of time to work out the actual budget if we were to sit down and go line by line through lots of material costs, um, labour, etc. And every time that we incurred a change, we'd have to refigure the budget. So it's a lot easier to use standard costing. It saves a whole lot of time to go through standard costing instead of being very meticulous when preparing a budget. Now, what you're going to find as a result of that is when you're looking at variance analysis, so you're looking at what you budgeted versus actual at the year end or, or quarterly or monthly, or whatever it might be, you're going to find that there's always going to be a variance because labour rates might have changed, cost of materials might have gone up and down in the period, and you might end up having a favourable variance at the end where your actual costs are less than what you've budgeted, or an adverse variance where you haven't budgeted enough and costs, so actual costs have been a lot higher than what you had in the budget. So when we're looking at standard cost variances, there's always going to be two typical types of variances that you're going to come across. One of them is what we call a rate variance and another is a volume variance in the most simplest form. So a rate variance will be the likes of a price variance, so difference between actual price paid and expected price to be paid. Whereas a volume variance is going to be the difference between actual units used versus budgeted units used for example. So when we're having a look at variance analysis with the likes of AAT, university, A level, whatever it might be, there's two specific areas that we can look at in particular and that's materials and labour. So direct labour, direct materials. So when we look at material, if we were to compare standard quantity at standard price of those materials versus actual quantity at standard price, what we're going to end up with is a usage variance. So the price up here, so the price between these two is going to stay the same, but the quantity is going to change. So that's that usage, that's that volume, it's going to change. So what we're checking here is did we use more or less materials than what we expected? Now with the second one, we're going to have a look at actual quantity at standard price versus actual quantity at actual price. So price here is going to fluctuate. So what you're dealing with effectively is the standard price versus actual price. And when we keep saying standard price, all we mean is budgeted price. So if we have a look at what that might look like with labour, what we can see here is something very similar. But we don't look at usage with labour. What we look at is what we call efficiency. So efficiency in the number of hours we use versus expected. So if we look at standard hours at the standard rate, so in the budget, versus actual hours at the standard rate, then that's going to give us a variance with the efficiency. So did we use more or less hours than expected with this? And then similarly, if we look at the bottom two here, if we compare actual hours at standard rate versus the actual hours at an actual rate, then we're going to have a rate change. So we're going to be dealing with different standards of rates there. So what was the rate per the budget versus the actual rate for those hours? And again, if we're talking about rates, if you've not come across this before, individuals who work in a company are going to have a rate per hour charged to them. So an individual who, say, a trainee accountant will have a rate of £20 per hour for a job versus a senior accountant who might have a rate per hour of £80 per hour, for instance. So to put it into perspective, if you have a junior accountant who can do the same job at £20 per hour versus a senior accountant doing the same job for £80 an hour, if you use a trainee accountant at the £20 per hour, then that's more of an efficiency saved than using the senior accountant at the higher rate per hour, for instance. So let's go into an example now. So imagine down here you've been given this information where you've got budgeted costs and budgeted hours, budgeted kg for the production of crayons, and then we've got actual costs, so 
actual units produced, actual kg, actual costs, hours and cost per hours as well. So this is the type of format of information that you might receive in an exam. And what we need to do is answer a few questions. So let's have a look at those now. So if we're asked what the standard usage is, what we need to look at is this column here. So the budget. And what we're being asked is for every unit, how many kgs do we need to produce that unit? So all we need to do is take this 12,000 kg and divide it by the 2,000 units in order to find out how many kg we need for each unit to be produced. So in this case, we only need 6 kg, so as in 12,000 divided by 2,000 to make one unit. Now, if we look at standard price, what we're being asked is for every kg, how much is that going to cost us? So all we need to do there is take the total cost for 12,000 kg and just divide that by 12,000 kg to get how much it's going to cost us for just one kg. So you can see here that that's taking 30,000 pounds divided by the 12,000 kg that we have in the budget there. So we can see that it's only going to cost us £2.50, for example, for 1 kg of wood. Now, if we're looking at standard hours, what we're actually being asked is, for each unit, how many hours of time do we need to produce that one unit? So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the 800 direct labour hours that we've got here, and we're going to divide that by the number of units that we have, so 2,000 units. And that's telling us that we need 0.4 hours to make one single unit. Now down here, we're being asked what is the standard rate per hour. So again here, what we are being asked is for every rate per hour, how much is that going to cost us? So what is going to be the overall rate per hour to make one unit of production? So all we need to do is take the total £24,000 for direct labour, divide that by the total hours of 800 and that gives us £30 per hour. So similarly, if we look at this example here, if we're being asked what the standard usage is, we're again being asked for every unit, how many kg do we need to produce a box? So here all we're going to do is take the 14,500 kg in the budget divided by the 2,500 units that we've budgeted for and that tells us that we need 5.8 kg for every unit that we've made. Now if we're being asked what the standard price is, what we're being asked effectively is for each kg how much cost are we expecting? So all we need to do there is take the total cost of £34,000 and divide that by 14,500 kg. And that gives us £2.34 per kg. Now again, if we look at standard hours, what we're being asked is how many hours do we need to produce each unit? So again, we're just going to take the 800 direct labour hours and divide that by the 2,500 units expected. So that gives us 0.32 hours required to make one single unit. Now, if we look at standard rate per hour, that again is just taking the total direct labour cost divided by the number of hours that we've budgeted. So again, we're just looking at the budgeted column here. We're not looking at actual at this point in time. So for each rate per hour, we're looking at £30 worth of costs. Now, this is what I would call step one in working out variance analysis for materials and labour because we need to use the table that I created earlier in order to calculate what the variances are actually going to be between budget and actual. So if we scroll to the top here, so what we're going to do is take these actual units of 3,000 units that were produced, and then we're going to times that by the standard usage, which was 5.8 kg, and then we're going to times that by the standard price, which was a £2.34. So that's going to give us 40,800. So next, what we need to do is take the actual quantity, so the actual kg of 14,750, and then times that by standard price, so £2.34 per kg. And then finally, we need to work out what actual quantity at actual price is. So we don't actually need to do any calculations here. All we need to do is take this pound here, this £27,000 here, 
So if we've been asked what the usage variance is going to be, then all we need to do is take this top one minus this bottom one here. Now, if you find that this is a positive figure, it means that we've got a favourable variance. Whereas if that was a negative figure, it would mean that we've got an adverse variance. So it's favourable because our actual usage is less than budgeted usage. Next, we need to compare the price difference. So what we're going to do is take this 34,586 minus the 27,000. And that again has given us a favourable variance. So if the top figure is more than the bottom figure in these calculations, it means that you've got a favourable variance. But again, if it goes into a negative, then it's just an adverse variance. Now, if we were to look at this from the labour point of view and have a look at efficiency and rate here, what we're going to do is work out the standard hours at standard rate which is just going to be the standard hours of 0 0.32 hours that we calculated earlier, the £30 per hour multiplied by the number of units that were actually made. So 3,000 units times by the 0 0.32 hours times by the £30 per unit. Next, to get to actual hours at standard rate, all we need to do is take the actual direct labour hours of 700 times by the £30 per hour, which was our standard rate per hour, which gives us 21,000. And next, to get actual hours at actual rate, we just need to take this 20,000 pounds for direct labor that actually happened. Now, if we take the 28,800 minus the 21,000 up here, we actually again have a favorable variance here with a 7,800 pounds against efficiency. And if we were to look at the difference between the 21,000 and the 20,000, You'll see here that we actually had a £1,000 favourable difference between the budgeted rate and the actual rate. So I hope you found all of that useful. Give the video a thumbs up. If you like the video, you found it useful. Consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.